This video is dedicated to scuba dive charter boat captains and their crews all around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. If you're new here, I'm a professional diving instructor and digital content creator, and we make videos on this channel with one simple goal in mind, and that's to help make you a better scuba diver. Like this, where, for example, I'm gonna be counting down the 14 divers you do not want to be on a scuba diving charter boat. So if you haven't done so already, make your next dive on our subscribe button, click the little bell icon, and that way you'll never miss any of our awesome content. Are you kidding me? We're going to be talking about diver etiquette and the no-nos that I see occur on boats that I'm on on a regular basis and how you can avoid being that diver. We've got 14 different diver faux pas to cover. Let's dive straight in. Number one is the late show diver. And you're late. What? You're late. Without a doubt, I speak from personal experience having been a charter boat captain that the number one thing you can do to upset your captain and crew for your dive charter vessel is to show up late to the boat. I get it, man. You guys are on vacation time. You know, the boat's not going to leave without you. Yes, it will, and it should do. Your five or ten minutes late is literally ruining their whole day. It is the number one thing that upsets boat captains, and that's why it's number one on this list. How can you avoid it? Buy a watch and set an alarm. Number two is the space hog diver. We've all seen it. We've probably all done it to some extent. You get on board the boat and you just get all your gear out of your bag and you start spreading it out on the bench and you're looking it over, making sure you haven't forgotten anything. If you have by now, it's too late. Uh, but then there are other divers boarding and they want to take up that space. Now, sometimes it's fine if the boat isn't too crowded. But sometimes it's not. If it's a packed vessel, you've got the space basically in front of and below your two tanks. So keep yourself condensed. How can you avoid this one? Well, my first question to any boat captain in the morning is, how full is the boat? And then that will give you an idea of the amount of space you have to work with. The number three diver that nobody wants on their charter boat is the masked camera assassin diver. Here you go, man. What do I mean by that? There are two buckets on every charter boat. One of them is for camera gear, lights, and computers, and the other one is for you to rinse the defog out of your masks. Now, most commercial defogs will degrade the O-rings in the camera and light systems, and that can be an expensive mistake. So don't be that diver and make sure you pay attention to the briefings and you know which bucket is for dunking what piece of gear in. Number four on my list, a personal pet peeve of mine, it's the new computer diver. Am I scared of a stupid computer? Please, the computer should be scared of me. This is the diver that shows up with a brand new shiny computer that they've just got out of the box and just healed the little piece of plastic off of that, that satisfactory little, oh, it's new. And they haven't read the manual. So what do they do? They turn to the nearest dive professional, which is usually their boat captain or their dive master or their first mate, and they say, can you tell me how to use this, please? No, no, we can't. Do you know why? Because I don't have that computer. In fact, I've never even seen it before. In fact, what brand is it and where the hell did you buy it? This is gonna shock the hell out of you, but I don't know all the specifications of every dive computer that's ever been made. How can you avoid being this diver? RTFM before you get on the boat. Number five on the list, I like to affectionately call the workshop diver. Fix it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In 40 minutes, Fix it. I can't. Who's the person who can? I'm the person who can, and I can't. This guy, and it is always men. I'm, it, I've never seen a woman do this. There's always a guy that shows up on the boat, and all of his gear is in some sort of disassembly, disarray, state of repair, it hasn't been put together, or hasn't been put together right, or hasn't been tested after service, and now something is leaking. Guys, test your gear. This is life support equipment. What are you doing? This is normally like the first day of the holiday diver. They've just flown in and something is broken in the flight because it wasn't packed properly and they haven't taken the time to test the gear and now they're on a charter boat heading out to a dive site and there's a leak or a hose that needs replacing. And all of a sudden the boat crew are expected to be some kind of uh, dive service center at sea. You can avoid becoming a workshop diver by setting up and testing your gear once you arrive to your destination and before you get on the boat. Number six is the shitter diver. Uh. 
a marine head on a dive boat does not function like a toilet you have at home. It's not designed to take the same properties. And yet there always seems to be one diver who's caught short and ruins the plumbing on the boat. Don't be that diver. It's, you know, I should have put this one higher up the list. Don't clog the marine head, please. Take care of business before you board. All the boat captains out there that have ever had to put the really long rubber gloves on will thank you. Number seven is the wreck to tech diver. You're entering a world of pain. Walter, man. We've talked about this in other videos, but the wreck to tech diver is basically any diver who either through arrogance or ignorance decides to ignore their no decompression limit on their computer and go into deco. See point number one about making captains run late, but it also sends nerves around the entire crew. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, if you go over your no decompression limit on a recreational dive, you do not become a technical diver, you're just a crap recreational diver. How do you avoid becoming a rec to tech diver? Learn how to read your computer and pay attention to it. Diver number eight is the Yabba Diver. This one really should have been higher up the list too. The Yabba Diver is the one who will not shut up, particularly during the safety briefing, particularly during roll call. We've all seen it on dive boats. Don't be this person, nobody likes this person. It's a simple rule to follow. If the captain or crew are talking, you shouldn't be. Number nine is the Tank Blaster Diver. This one goes out in particular to one boat captain I have in mind who gets particularly annoyed by this. You know who you are if you're watching. The tank blaster diver is the diver that feels the necessity to absolutely make sure that their regulated dust cap is bone dry by blasting it with whatever gas they've got remaining in their tank. It's loud, it's obnoxious, it's unnecessary. Take a piece of kitchen paper or your t-shirt and dry that little dust cap out before replacing it on your reg. The entire boat crew's nervous systems, thank you. Number 10 is the attention hog diver. I am out here for you. You don't know what it's like to be me out here for you. It is an up at dawn, pride swallowing siege. This is pretty self-explanatory and it does tie into other divers on the list, but let me put it in these terms. If you have one captain and one first mate slash dive master on a dive boat, and let's say you have 10 divers, each diver is entitled to about one tenth of the crew's attention. If you're taking more than that, you fall into this category. Number 11 is the puker diver. All because you want to save a couple extra pennies. And before you all start going crazy in the comments, I'm not having a go at anyone who suffers from the motion of the ocean and gets seasick. But what you shouldn't be doing is either going down in the marine head, which will make your situation 10 times worse, and clogging the onboard facilities, or being sick anywhere on the boat when you are surrounded literally by the ocean. Pick a corner of the vessel going with the wind, go for distance, you will be judged on points out of 10 for color and noise. I should actually make a video on how to prevent seasickness as well. Number 12 is the Lost Compass Diver. We have been uh, trying to locate it. Pretty much exactly what it sounds like. You get in for a dive, it's not a drift dive, you're supposed to be coming back to the mooring and you surface just somewhere else. And the next thing you know, you're sending panic into the captain and into the dive master that they really didn't need because you either don't know how to use a compass or you didn't have one with you or you didn't bother to do a boat check on a shallow dive. And now you're floating off into the ether, waving a fin or an SMB in the air to get attention while they're getting other divers. It's just a mess. Don't, don't be this diver. Number 13 is the in over your head diver. Can we get serious now? Captain? No one has ever trained for an incident like that. This is a diver who signs up for a dive that is way, way more challenging than anything they've ever done before. Listen, I'm all about pushing the envelope forwards and increasing your experience and so on, but don't take massive jumps, don't take risks with your life, and don't sign up for dives that you're just ill-prepared for. You're putting everyone at risk, you're scaring people, stop it. How can you avoid becoming this diver? Make sure you understand the depths, the conditions, ask about the current, 
the surface conditions, what the entry and exit methods will be for the dive. Uh, all that information will be readily available for you before you give credit card details and sign up for any dive from the dive shop that you're going with. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, number 14 is the non-tipping diver. Come on, throw in a buck. Uh-uh, I don't tip. You don't tip? No, I don't believe in it. These guys are in the service industry. It is a hard, physical job. They are busting their ass to entertain you, give you awesome dives, and keep you safe. There's a tip jar there for a reason. Put your hand in your pocket and remember, wind and waves may tip the ship, but only you can tip the crew. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. There you have it. That is my 14 divers. You do not want to be on a scuba diving day charter boat to stay on the right side of your captain and crew. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, please feel free to give it the old thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what divers did I miss. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, my name is James. This was your Divers Ready Mouthpiece Monday for this week. Dive safe, dive often. Boom. Um.